Meraki TV is proudly brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond. Education for investing wisely. Everybody, I'm Anna Savo and this is Meraki TV, brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond, education for investing wisely. Tonight we visit beautiful Mithilini or Lesbos, Helen puts a modern twist on a traditional favourite, Halva. We visit the life and times of Mikis Todorakis, Nula shows us how to create some awesome inks, we talk to Vasalianis about Vimata and there's Did You Know Greeks in the NRL. To kick it all off tonight though is the indelible Angela Tsarujas, the very lucky Maria Kochlastu, got to chat documentaries, stand up in Greece and childhood heroes. Okay, we're back here with Angela Tsarujas, our favourite comedian. Welcome back Angela. Nice to be back Maria, nice to be back in Sydney and nice to be back on your show. So tell us a little bit about your um, Back to Sparta. <laughs> Back to Sparta. Is that out now? <clears throat> it's finished. I'm very proud, Maria, of Back to Sparta because it was a journey to go back to Greece and uh, to uh, fulfill my father's wish of doing one show in Greece. I want to go back to Greece. I want to do a show in Greece. I want to go back to my roots. I want to go back to where my family's from. I want to go to the Acropolis, hell or high water. I want to do a show at the Agora or on one of the stages there. Whether I get arrested or, or I'm allowed to do it or not do it, I'm going to do it. That's, that's, that's like my journey. Look, God, it's getting windy now. God agrees with me. And for me, it's like going back to Greece was a homecoming of sorts because it was like I didn't know how the Greeks were going to accept it because they have stand-up comedy, and comedy in Greece, it's not the same as it is in the Western world. And we got to interview guys like Lazopolo and the interior minister in Greece. We went during a, a debt crisis. So it was challenging, but I said I wanted to do it. And we ended up doing it successfully, and that was all part of the film. And <clears throat> any money that we raised on the actual show that we did in Greece, we gave it to Children's Hospital and, and to the uh, Kakoyanis Children Foundation to uh, support kids. Because we, we didn't go there to make money, you know. We wanted to go there and make this project. So what's the best part of your job, other than making people laugh? What really gives you a kick? Best part of my job is I get to sleep in in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you love to perform with that you haven't just yet? Heidi Klin. Heidi Klin. I would love to perform with Heidi Klin. I, I'm a big fan of his. I've been a big fan of his since a kid. And I know he still does tours sometimes. I would love to do one show with Heidi Klin and hang out with him. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Are you still doing comedy? I hope to. I, I, I mean, it's a, it's a privilege, not a right sometimes. And sometimes I'll, I'll, I say, hey, I'm still doing it. I wake up again. I'm still doing it. I still, want to, I still feel like I'm very creative. I still feel like I got lots of stuff to tell. And you want to be relevant. You don't want to be that guy that, ah, don't need them. You know, we saw this, whatever. You want to be relevant. You want to keep active <clears throat> and keep doing it. And that's why I think it's so important. Um, so what can you, with your experience, what can you tell new up-and-coming comedians? What advice would you give well, from your... Now especially, get on any stage you can. Comedy club, uh, open mic night, whatever you can do, do whatever you can. Like, get on stage. I've had... A, it's funny, a lot of Greek kids will send me messages, even, even fans. I'm thinking of being an actor, I'm thinking of being a comedian, and, I, and I, my, my best advice is to just do it. Angela, it was a pleasure. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Maria. I was uh, so happy to be on the Meraki TV show again. And uh, thanks again for having me on it. And uh, this is wonderful. Keep doing what you're doing, because this is great. This, is, this does a service. See, we all, we're all connected here. 
I come on your show, you interview me, and as they're filming us, it's all, you know, this is all good. It's all Greek. It's all, we need to keep doing this. If we don't do this, it's going to die out. Mikis Thodorakis will always be remembered as the man who wrote Zorba the Greek. However, this amazing man contributed so much more to Greece, not only musically and culturally, but also politically and historically. To give us more, here's our mini doc on Mikis Thodorakis. Mikis Thodorakis was born on 29th of July 1925 on the island of Chios. He was named after the Archangel Michael, who his mother believed always healed the frequently sick young Mikis. His early influences were Byzantine music. He would chant in the Greek Orthodox Church from the tender age of seven and by 12 had begun at music lessons where life changed the day he heard Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Not long after, Greece was scourged by the German occupation and it was during this time that Mikis wrote his first songs. At only 15, he was over six foot tall and went to join the resistance. Deeming him too young, they sent him home. Only two years later though, he attacked an Italian officer and was consequently jailed. While in jail, Mikis was indoctrinated in Marx's theories. He wasted no time once he was released and promptly joined the communist resistance. He worked during the day and fought the Germans at night. In 1943, he went to Athens to study at the conservatory and to join the Greek People's Liberation Army, or ELAS, Ethnikos Laikos Epelefteritikos Stratos, the military arm of the left-wing National Liberation Front. During the ensuing civil war, his involvement in Elas found him arrested, beaten and jailed, tortured and even buried alive. After the war, he moved to Paris to further his studies at the conservatory, where he was soon being called the new Stravinsky. It was here that he penned his first international film score, for Ill Met by Moonlight, whose title song, The Honeymoon, was later recorded by the Beatles. He also scored for the ballet Antigone, performed in London's Covent Garden, starring Rudolf Nureyev and choreographed by Australia's John Cranko. He then returned to his beloved Greece and developed his sound, metasymphonic music, symphony mixed with Greek popular instruments. He teamed the sound with the poetry of Yorgos Seferis, Yanis Ritsos and Odyssea Silitis. It was a breakaway success. In 1964, his yeah. most famous composition, Zorba the Greek, breathes life. Its impact was worldwide and even resulted in hordes of tourists now flocking to the Greek islands to recreate the final scene. The composition Zorba the Greek has since appeared in over 200 discographies. Mickey's politics, though, remained a central part of his life, and when the junta emerged in Greece in 1967, Theodorakis was spouted public enemy number one. His music was banned from radio, and records were confiscated from the shops. Just owning a Theodorakis record could get you sent to jail. He was imprisoned and then under house arrest for three years before finally being allowed to leave for Paris on April 13, 1970. Once in Paris, he recorded 10 albums of compositions he had completed while under arrest and even scored one of Al Pacino's most famous films, Serpico. Amongst his many amazing subsequent achievements were the Lenin Peace Prize in 1983 and a Lifetime Achievement Award bestowed on him by Putin. He now lives in retirement, reading, writing and publishing arrangements of his scores. His mark on modern Greek history, both musical and political, is undeniable. But he will always be remembered for the melody that the world over, the second the opening bars are played, no matter what nationality, the room stands up and yells, Opa. It's time.
time for an income breakthrough to free yourself from working for money, have your money work for you. George Focus of Focus Beyond will show you step by step how to generate income from the share market irrespective of if it goes up or down. Access resources that do the hard work for you and devote no more than 60 minutes a month so you can enjoy financial freedom and time with family. To change your life forever, go to focusbeyond.com now. Iremia Home Care Services. It's so difficult asking for help. Take the stress out and enjoy precious time because there's no place like home. Eremia.com.au Whether it's Melbourne, Darwin, Queensland, something exotic or just perfect Greece, call Mega Travel 9824 2427. SCJewelry.com, specialising in evil eye jewellery and pieces full of fun that are distinct, unique and you. SCJewelry.com, SC is you. Hi guys, today I'm going to show you a really traditional dish that everybody either loves or hates, but this is a family favourite. It's perfect for the summer season coming up. It's the good old halva, but again, with a bit of a twist, we're going to serve it up with some beautiful berry compote. So we're going to start off with our berry compote because it's really important that that's nice and cool to serve over the halva once you're ready to eat. Add your water into a fry pan, add in your sugar, Give it a bit of a stir. Have this on low heat because it's really important that it doesn't crystallize because you just want it to simmer and you don't want the berries to melt because you want those whole pieces of berries to smother over that beautiful halibut. Add your berries into the pan. About a teaspoon of lemon juice. We just want to take that sweetness out and put that little bit of zing in there. Let that simmer away for about 10 minutes. All you really want to do is try and get a little bit of thickness into that beautiful syrup so that that drizzles over the halva. Make sure your berries don't melt because you want them whole. That's the key to making it look absolutely spectacular in the end. We've got a half a cup of butter here. Have your pan on medium heat. Add your semolina, and this is a really important process. Brown your semolina so that it's a golden brown. You have gotta make sure that your heat is not too hot. It gets really good for the old mar muscle here because you have gotta keep stirring. Make sure your berry is not melting away. Like I said, you need those whole pieces so that it doesn't look too melted, and this is ready to go. So we're gonna let that cool down now for about 20 minutes until it cools down. Our semolina is starting to brown up. As you can see, right at the bottom of the pan, you've got to make sure you don't burn it, but you want that golden brown. We're ready now to add in our coarsely chopped almonds. Dry roast those, add a cup of sugar, our beautiful spices. We've got some cinnamon, some ground clove, and a bit of allspice in there. Right towards the end, we're going to add in about a cup of raisins. Now you can put the raisins in. Some people like them, some don't. I love them. We're going to give it an extra special summery zing today. We're going to put a little bit of orange rind in through there as well. Slowly add your water and stir really, really quickly. What you're looking for here, guys, is that it's starting to move off the pan. You're going to get that really beautiful silky effect coming off the pan and then you know your semolina is ready. Our halva is ready to be put in the refrigerator for maybe an hour or so. It doesn't take too long at all. Leaving it overnight is even better because you want it really, really cold. And here it is, guys, two pot wonder. We're going to finish it off now with our beautiful berry compote. Just zhuzh it around, let it drizzle. We love that whole rustic effect. And if you've got these edible flowers, which is something that I keep in my fridge all the time, it just finishes everything and makes everything look so elegant. Serve it up with some beautiful fresh cream that I've got over here. Sometimes I like to put a little bit of vanilla yogurt through my fresh cream. It just gives it that other element that nobody else is thinking of. Tonight, Nulla gives us an art project that can be enjoyed by all from five to 105. And we want to see your creations on this one, so make sure you upload your pics to the Meraki TV Facebook page and Nulla's favourite will win a copy of her new book, You Are, That Is, Creative. Hi, I'm Nulla and today I've got another art project for you. This time we're going to explore the world of inks. To get started, what we're going to need? Inks and paper. And you can, you can use a variety of different kinds of paper. I found the best one for me, but I want you guys to go and explore and experiment. 
If you don't know where to get inks and you want a good uh, range of colours, in fact exactly the same thing that I'm using today, you can just order them for, from me, around about nine colours for $30. Easy squeezy. What we're going to do is we're not going to use any brushes, hence why I've got this, because we're going to splatter and splash, blow and spit. Good Greek style. <laughs> as, you, as you're splattering and, and um, mucking around and dripping and dropping your inks, what you can use is water to, and I just use a little container here just, you know, to spray it out of. You can drip it out of here if you want. You can pour it on the paper, so you'll be seeing me do that. So now I use that alcohol rubbing um, solution that you get from the chemist. Called, uh, it's called isopropyl. Propyl. Um, and that reacts with the water, so it does that magical kind of crazy, crazy stuff and you just can keep adding it. So if you alternate between water and the alcohol, water and alcohol, have a lot of fun. So guys, what I do is I usually have lots and lots of papers, okay, that's a lie, three papers at any one time, but the big sheets, then I work on them alternating and I let it dry and I come back to it. It does take a little while to dry, but it's better that you do less than more. And when they're finished, you just stack them up like I have over here, and then you can pick when you're ready to write a letter to somebody or say a thank you, Christmas, birthday, etc, etc, artwork by, insert name, or you can make these cute little booklets. Ta-da! Just with a little bit of stitching here, and you've made a personalised little journal for somebody that you care about. I really want to see what you're going to create with this process, guys. So please, you know, when you engage with this, load up the, uh, upload the images up onto the Meraki Facebook page. I'm going to pick the favourite one, my favourite one, and we'll give a, the person a copy of my book, You Are That Is Creative. Did you know that some of the most influential and powerful administrators in the sport of rugby league in Australia are Greek? George Paponis, Nick Pappas and Nick Politis are three very powerful men in the world of rugby league in Australia. Each of them holds a very important role in three of the largest and most successful rugby league clubs in Australia. George Paponis is chairman of the Canterbury Bulldogs, based in the Canterbury Bankstown area of Sydney. He's also chairman of the New South Wales Rugby League and in 2013 was awarded an Order of Australia medal for his contribution to the sport. Paponis was born in Tripoli in 1953 and like many Greeks at the time, migrated to Australia with his family and settled in the Canterbury Belmore area of Sydney. Paponis also had a very illustrious playing career with the Bulldogs, playing from 1972 to 1982 and was captain for five of those years. He played for New South Wales from 1976 until 1980 and played eight tests for Australia. Paponis was the first non-Australian born to captain the Kangaroos, captaining the side five times. Paponis managed to combine his successful playing career with his career as a medical doctor, which saw Dr George become the pride of the Sydney Greek community. The Many Faces of Hellenic Culture, a fascinating read by author Billy Kotsis, who takes us to the Greek colonies of the Mediterranean, Black Sea, Asia Minor and the Middle East, available from Amazon and anywhere good Greek books are sold. Vasalianis is one of the most passionate and knowledgeable persons on Greek dance in Australia 
and he's on a mission to spread that love. Coming up is his annual Vimata workshop in Sydney. To tell us all about it, I caught up with the man himself via Skype. Yasu Vasili, welcome back to Meraki TV. Hi Anna. Tell us about your weekend workshop Vimata. Great. Uh, well, Vimata is a concept that started about four years ago. Um, obviously, Vimata in Greek means steps, and so we've connected it with uh, a series of workshops that we want to run annually. This will be our third Vimata. This year, we'll showcase um, Katerina Asteriou Kavazi from um, Greece, Amalia Papadopoulos Mionidou, <laughs> mouth uh, tongue twister. Um, now, Amalia uh, will not be teaching dance. She'll be teaching a workshop on folk song. So it's not only for dancers, but also for singers as well. She comes with a wealth of knowledge and experience in um, Greek uh, song, folk song, and you know, the more uh, traditional songs, uh, regional songs. So she's going to run a workshop based on traditional song. Katerina is going to run uh, a workshop obviously on the dances that she loves most uh, from her hometown, which is Drama in Macedonia. So the focus for this year's workshop is basically the songs and dances from the region of Macedonia. So we're looking at um, myself teaching uh, Kendriki Macedonia. So I'll be doing um, dances from Kalkidiki, dances from outside of Thessaloniki, right up to sort of Edessa, looking up sort of central Macedonia. We also will be um, having a, a teacher come from Melbourne. His name is George Kiriakidis, who also is a very talented musician. And he will be doing uh, Ditiki Macedonia, Western Macedonia, and he'll be teaching the dances right from Florena, right down to Kozani, Kastoria, Grevena. Um, so we're again showcasing local teachers, um, you know, uh, both from interstate and here in Sydney, but also uh, we're welcoming uh, two people from Greece. So do you have to be in a dancing group to attend? No, not at all. You don't have to. You just have to have an interest in Greek culture. Do you have to attend every session? Closer to the date, I think, we will probably publish online as well and on Facebook um, a more detailed program. So if people just want to attend a certain section, they could. Um, but at the moment, that's sort of what we're thinking. Uh, the good thing is, is, for the first time this time round, for the third Vimata, we're actually going to run a series of Glendy nights um, in the after, in the evening, sorry, so which are associated with the workshop. So during the day, dancers will get an experience of actually dancing the dancers, and then at night they'll actually put it into practice. So we've got um, about uh, 12 musicians, both locally and interstate, coming in. Uh, I think for the first time in Sydney, we'll be having a Dramiani Lira being played, uh, Thrakotiki Gaida. We've got um, Khalkina, that, uh, that's the brass instruments of the Tiki Macedonia, which will be played probably for the first time in Sydney. Oh, also, before I forget, we're going to be ra um, drawing a raffle, and the lucky winner uh, will be getting a return ticket to Greece from Sydney. So, and they're a dollar each. So, if people are interested, uh, they're more than welcome uh, to, to pre-buy some of those tickets uh, just by contacting me or just through the website. Vasily, I'm so excited and my crew and I will see you there. No problem. Thank you. And I'm glad you're going to be covering the event. So I'm really excited about that. I'll always love Meraki TV and the work you guys do. Thanks, guys. Vidya, thanks so much for the Barea yet again. We are, of course, brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond Education for investing wisely. A big thank you to our special guests tonight, Angela Tsarujas and Vasily Yanis. Don't forget to upload your pics of your inks to our Facebook page for your chance to win one of Nula's brand new books, You Are That Is Creative. If you've missed an episode, of course, you can catch it on the website or our YouTube channel. But for now, I'm leaving you with a snippet of a brand new documentary on Lesbos by our very own Billy Kotsis. We're so proud of him. The full movie will be showing as part of the Greek Film Festival this year in Sydney. And I urge you all to go indulge and support. Tickets for the Film Festival are available at greekfilmfestival.com.au and selling fast. So jump on now. I hope you all enjoy and until next week, Bedia, mwah, filakia from me, Anna Savo.
According to Greek mythology, Lesbos was the patron god of the island. It is believed that immigrants from mainland Greece entered the island in the late Bronze Age. The island was mentioned by Homer and of course by the great writer Thucydides. During the medieval times, the island belonged to the Byzantine Empire. Lesbos was conquered by the Ottoman Turks in 1462 until 1912 when it was liberated by the Hellenic forces during the First Balkan War. One meaning of the word lesbian derives from the poems of Sappho, who was born on the island and wrote with powerful emotion and content directed towards other women. Due to this association, Lesbos, and especially the town of Ereso, her birthplace, are visited frequently by GLBT tourists. Ένα πολύ σημαντικό χαρακτηριστικό της Λέσβου είναι η ύπαρξη του Πανεπιστημίου και των πολλών τμήματων που έχει. Αυτό σημαίνει ότι έχουμε ένα μεγάλο αριθμό φοιτητών, το οποίο δίνει πολύ μεγάλη ζωντάνια στο νησί και ειδικά στην πόλη της Μητυλίνης καθ' όλη τη διάρκεια του χρόνου. Η Μητυλίνη δεν είναι από τις πόλεις που ερημώνονται το χειμώνα. Η ίδια ζωή που θα δεις το χειμώνα θα τη δεις και το καλοκαίρι. Και υπάρχουν πάρα πολλά μαγαζιά στα οποία ε, μπορούν να πάνε οι άνθρωποι και πιστεύω ότι το Πανεπιστήμιο πραγματικά έχει δώσει αυτήν την πνοή και ήταν πολύ πολύ σημαντικό και εξακολουθεί και είναι η ύπαρξή του ε, και οι φοιτητές που, που έρχονται εδώ. We had stumbled upon an Uzzel festival. My excitement grew, for this was a great opportunity to have a really nice drink and to have a great night out. Uh, you see, the Lesbos Island comes out from the bottle of Uzo. So we were very famous all over the world for Uzo. Yeah, we are 16, 16 distilleries. Everybody says about Uzo and about Uzo Mitilini and Uzo Plomari. And this is the, the, the made the island very famous around the world. That's why it's very famous, uh, Uzo in Lesbos, because uh, the anise from Lisbon is very pure of uh, sesame oil and, you know, the, the aroma and uh, the smell is much, much different than the others. It can produce from Tunisia, Turkey and, and, and uh, over the world, but is not the same. Lesbos is one of those really big islands. In Greece, it's our third biggest, and if you include Cyprus, it's the fourth biggest in the Greek world. It's got a size of 1,632 square kilometers. Now, because of this factor, it's always going to run the risk of, well, running on empty. And if you don't fill up often enough, uh, there's always a chance that somewhere deep in the mountains, you may just have the situation we found ourselves in. Meraki TV is proudly brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond. Education for investing wisely.